and welcome to the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. This is a morning show that happens on the third Thursday every month. We are so glad you're here. My name is Maddie Vincent, and this is my friend and co-host, Macy Mosley. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's show. We created the Proverbs 31 Morning Show with you in mind. That's right, Mace. The morning show is a place for us to pause in the middle of a hustle and bustle of life and just get together, build community, and also hear um, some truth from God's Word. Yeah. So we are really excited you're here. If this is your first time, let us know in the comments. Macy and I have our computers. Your comments pulled up right here. If it is your second or third time, tell us too, and we're so glad that you're part of this morning show family. Yeah, exactly. We think the morning show is so fun, and we know it's been a month since we last met, so we want to hear what you've been up to. Let us know in the comments what April has been like for you, if you've done anything fun, if you've gone on any fun trips or hung out with any friends. We just want to hear your update. Um, but Maddie, what's your update? Okay, you guys, I've had a very rough month, and it started with an avocado. <laughs> I don't know if anyone it started with an avocado. <laughs> famous last words. I don't know if anyone noticed that I have a splint on my hand, and I want to take this opportunity while I have all of you guys here on the morning show to give a PSA that if you are cutting an avocado, do not hold it in your hand. I cut my finger while making lunch almost two months ago, yeah, and it has been a whole situation. And I had surgery last month. And now I still have a splint and I have no feeling in my finger. It is a whole situation. So it's been an ordeal. It has been an ordeal. So public service announcement, do not cut your avocado while holding it in your hand. Yeah. Mace, what have you been up to this month? I've had a really fun month. And actually, Maddie has been a part of my <laughs> fun month. Last weekend, Maddie and I and some of our other friends who we work with here at Proverbs 31 went on a trip to East Tennessee, where I'm from, and we went to Dollywood, the theme park. <laughs> it was not a P31 it was sponsored not trip. not a P31 sponsored trip. But just a lot of us really wanted to go to Dollywood. So we did, and we rode a lot of roller coasters. Some of us love roller coasters. Some of us were a little bit scared. <laughs> um, we had frozen lemonade and cinnamon bread, and it was just so much fun. And it was really the highlight of my April so far. Well, nice. Speaking of highlights, we have highlighted some headlines for today's morning show, and I think I have one of the most exciting headlines we've ever had on the morning oh, show. Oh, that is, wow, a bold way to start. The mm. most exciting headline we've ever had. I know. So, had. for the first time ever, Proverbs 31 has a hat. <gasps> look how cute! Is this not the cutest hat you have ever wow. seen? Wow. I mean, look at her. She's in a dress, and she's pulling that hat off. I love it. Should I wear it for the rest of the show? Maybe? Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> um, this is our first ever Proverbs 31 hat. I think there's only a limited amount in the bookstore, so go check it out. Nicole is behind the camera today, and she is going to link the hat in the comments. Go check it out. Get you one. It's going to look real cute on Target cute. runs, yeah. grocery store runs. Whatever. Even maybe just like a Saturday. Afternoon. You know where you could wear that hat? Dollywood? <laughs> oh, you could wear it to Dollywood. <laughs> but I was going to say our next headline is that registration for She Speaks Online, a communicators conference, is open. And it's an online conference, so you could totally wear your P31 hat. Oh, while you're at the conference. That. But if you're not familiar with what She Speaks is, it is this amazing conference that we have annually here at Proverbs 31 Ministries for women who feel called to write, speak, or lead. And She Speaks Online is a communicators conference that will set you up with how to best communicate the passions and the callings that God has laid on your heart. It's completely virtual, like I said, and it'll take place June 24th through the 26th online. We're gonna drop a link in the comments so that you can go and learn all about She Speaks Online, but it's really great and we don't want you to miss it. Macy, how many She Speaks have you attended? I have attended three She Speaks, and it's so fun. Okay, I love so She Speaks. Okay, so from an insider's perspective, what is the best part of She Speaks? I think the best part of She Speaks is just the connection that you have with so many different women who have the same passions as you, the same callings, and the same questions. You can really like brainstorm with other people. You get to hear about their story and how God has planned their life out for this exact moment in time and given them the passions that they have on their hearts. And so I just really love the connection. Me too. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Speaking of connections, I 
want to connect with anybody that is currently doing the Exodus study in first five. We are on the second week of it. This is a study that I am personally doing in my quiet time every morning, and I want to know who's in it, who's studying it. This title of the study is How Do We Get Through This? And it has been so good. Um, also, can we talk about how wild the book of Exodus is? I know. It's I mean, crazy. So many crazy stories. So much happening in Exodus. Yeah. So if you are in the first five study, leave a comment. I want to know and I want to connect with you afterwards and hear what you're thinking. I love how we can use the morning show and social media to connect with people who we may not ever get to otherwise. I know. It's yeah, really awesome. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Another fun highlight that we want to share with you is that we have a new series out on the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast. It's therapy and theology series and we've had them we've had a couple of them before, but this one is all about the topic of shame. And you can tune into that on the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast or on our YouTube channel. It's by Lisa Turkers and She's joined by her personal counselor, Jim Cress, and also her friend, who is also the director of theology here at Proverbs 31 Ministries, Joel Mudamale. And I'm telling you, it is full of such rich, good stuff that will leave you feeling encouraged and just help you learn so much. So you can look for those new episodes all throughout the month of April on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. While you were sharing about therapy and theology, I was catching up on comments. Oh, what's going on? Macy, there are so many first-time guests here, which Aww. is so exciting. Welcome. We're really glad you're here. I want to let you know that we do have a Facebook group for the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. Um, that way you don't miss an episode. We'll yeah. update you guys when the next show is. We'll chit-chat in between shows, so go check that out. For sure. Um, and also, since there's so many first-time members here... Um, I think we should go ahead and introduce our guest for today's show. Love it. And also maybe play a game. Ooh. Does that sound fun to everyone? Who likes games? I Everybody love games. Right? Everybody likes games. All right. So for our guest today, we have our very favorite friend, co-worker. Her name is Ashley Jackson. She's coming on the show today. We're really excited what she's sharing about. Um, but we're even more excited to show you the video so you can get to know her a little bit. Another cup of coffee. Woo! Who's ready for second dinner? Asiago! Paper plates! Hope you kids are hungry! And now I'm outside in my studio. <laughs> I was just thinking, I've walked many a day in pouring rain. And sometimes I like to feel sorry for myself. Throw a little pity party. You're invited. Like... Other people have cars. They drive in the rain to get their kids. But not you, Ashley. You have to walk. Because that's how I talk when I'm having a pity party with that voice. So that's like life, you know? Sometimes other people don't have to walk through what we have to walk through. But maybe they're not going where we're going. And God's just asking us, like, can you trust me again? Even when it doesn't feel fair. Ashley, welcome to the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. Thank you so much for having me. We're so glad you're here. You guys, what do you think of the video? Is Ashley not the cutest human being you've ever seen? She is, and funny. She and is so funny. she has great hair. I mean, look at her. <laughs> Thank you, guys. She has hair goals for us here on staff. Um, we know Ashley because we work with her, but we know that maybe not all of you do. So, Ashley, I wanted to give you a chance to introduce yourself to our audience, okay. let them know who you are, and a little bit about what you do here on staff. Okay, so my name is Ashley, like they said, and I am a wife of 12 and a half years. I have two little boys who are 11 and 7 and currently giving me a run for my money. <laughs> and I came on staff about a year and a half ago, and I work currently on the Compel team, which is our writer's training program, which is where you can learn to write. And so I moved here from California. And so I have loved living in Charlotte, minus the whole COVID thing. But besides that, <laughs> it's been great. Oh, <laughs> we love that. Ashley, we get to work with her a lot because Maddie and I are on the social media team, and Ashley does a lot with social media, and it's such a treat. So we're so glad we get to share her with all of you today. Okay, you guys, how about we 
do a little game. We Love thought it would be fun to play a game of Would You Rather. Ashley, are you up yes, for that? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay, this is a community game. You guys are going to respond in the comments. It's going to be very fun. Macy, do you want to explain yeah, that? Yeah, for sure. So here's what's going to happen. There's going to be a question that pops up on screen with two options, and you have to choose which option you would rather do. So we're going to discuss our, our answer together. We want you guys to play with us. We're going to be looking at the comments and reading which option you would rather do. OK, sound good? Yes. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here we mm -hmm. go. We're First, ready. would you rather? Would you rather have to live without the internet or mm. live without air conditioning slash heat? This is a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> what do I you like think, both of Ashley? Those things. Yeah, I like them both too. Um, as much as we use the internet for everything, I'm going to have to go with not having the internet. Yeah. I'm going to have AC because I get kind of grumpy <laughs> without AC. Get grumpy without AC. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to side with Ashley. If I'm, you know, where I'm living right now in Charlotte, North Carolina, I need AC and heat. I'm like such a baby. Like the minute it gets cold outside, yes, I turn on the heat and my <laughs> husband gets a little bit grumpy with me. But I would choose AC and heat. And I guess instead of having the internet, I would just read a lot of books yeah. or okay. talk to people. I'm cracking up because the comment section is going crazy. Oh, what are people saying? I have not seen one person say they would give up AC. Everyone is saying they would give up internet. That and is I'm hilarious. shocked because I would not give up internet. I would be hot wow. and sweaty or cold and miserable because my whole life is surrounded by the internet. I work online, I listen to music, watch shows. I don't know what I would do without the internet. I'm cracking up. Santosh just said, we're from Texas, y'all. Like, she was saying, like, I will not be without my no, AC in you. Texas. Wow, Maddie, you're on your own. Now. I am truly alone, a wow. lone person you over here. You weren't expecting that, were you? I thought some people would live without AC, but apparently not. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's you. I am, as the cool kids say, shook. You are shook. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Okay, we'll see if anybody else sides with you on the next <laughs> questions. Our second, would you rather, is would you rather be covered in scales or be covered in fur? I don't know that I would want either, but yeah. you have to choose. Okay, so I have to say though, I'm already hot from the last question, yeah. thinking about not having AC, so it makes me want to be in the water, so scales. Because fish have scales, right? Yeah, yeah. they do. Okay, so, they do have scales. Yeah. I don't know why I would choose this, but I would choose to be covered in fur. I really like dogs, so that's my Aww. like only reasoning there. <laughs> but I will say that when I was younger, I really wanted to be a mermaid, and I would play in the pool and pretend that I could breathe so underwater. <laughs> so if you asked me 15, 20 years ago, maybe I would say mermaid, but or you know scales. But I'm gonna say fur. I have no reasoning behind this, but I think I would like the fur. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Why not? <laughs> it doesn't Let's matter. See. Oh, we're seeing lots of fur. Lots Ooh, of fur. Oh, some scale. There we have it. Lisa so Allen, she says fur. You guys, Lisa Allen is our <laughs> boss. So She's the best. Leave a note. Tell her how much yeah, you love tell us. Yeah, tell her you, you would have fur with her. Um, okay, last would you rather. Would you rather have to read aloud every word you read? Okay. Or sing every word you say? This one's a fun Ooh. one. Okay, so we immediately have to say, sing every word you say, because I am a huge musical fan. So not only would I want to sing it, but I would want to dance it. Oh, oh love it. <laughs> she said, I will take your singing and I will raise you dancing. dancing. Guys, what if we were singing the morning show right now? Maybe that should be the answer. Would you still tune in if the three of us had to sing everything oh, we're saying? I'm not sure that you would. I'm not sure that I would do no. it. But I agree with Ashley. Oh. I would choose to sing out loud everything I say. I already do that a good amount <laughs> when I'm by myself, um, which is a little quirky, but I do. What about you, Maddie? I am going to save everyone, and I'm going to read everything out loud and not make anyone listen to me sing. <laughs> oh. So that is, I mean, this is a selfish everything. thing. I would much prefer to read everything out loud than sing. Okay, there's some people with you. This one's more 50-50. I'm seeing like some people saying read. I can't sing. It's scary. And that kind of sounds like what you said. <laughs> I know. It's I. I can't sing either, but hey, it's fun. Nobody yeah. wants to hear me sing. I'm just going to put that out there. 
Wow, that was such a fun game. That was fun. You Thanks guys, it playing. feels really hard to transition from something so silly as Would You Rather <laughs> to what we're about to talk about today. But I'm really excited that Ashley is here because she is one of the most open and honest and most vulnerable people I know. And she has struggled so much with um, just depression and anxiety. And she has a really awesome message to share today. So Ashley, do you want to go ahead and start, start sharing your story? Yeah, so the way I want to start this is actually to ask you guys a question. And you guys in the comments, we want you to answer this question too. Have you ever been in a season of your lives where you felt frustrated with your circumstances mm -hmm. or how you're responding to those circumstances? Or if you're really brave in answering this question, frustrated with God in about those circumstances? That's a good question, Ashley. I immediately, when you ask that, I think about a season that I went through. Um, I've been married for almost three years now, but when I was engaged to my now husband, I was living in Tennessee at the time and he was in North Carolina, so we were long distance and I had lived my whole life in Tennessee, I had my community there, mm -hmm. my family was there, it was comfortable um, and I just didn't want to move yeah. and I was frustrated that I had to move. I felt really anxious about what the transition um, moving would look like mm. and what it would look like, you know, getting married and being a newlywed. And it was frustrating, too, because I knew that I should feel really excited because mm. I was engaged mm -hmm. and about to marry my best friend. But I couldn't help feeling so anxious and yeah. so afraid of what the next season would hold. So I can definitely relate to that. It's funny. All the comments are saying, yes, this is where I am currently. I've live in this season. I think mm. that this is something that we all struggle with. Yeah. And I think that is so true. And so I want to share a little bit about a, one of my many seasons mm. that I've been in this. And this was when I had a three-year-old toddler and I was seven months pregnant with my second son. And I had struggled with really hard deep depression and anxiety like um, Maddie has mentioned. And I know so many of you also struggle with that or you love someone who struggles with that. It's something that is very widespread mm -hmm. and it's something that we have to figure out how we're going to wrestle in or wrestle through. And I remember having this vivid memory that as I struggled looking out the window in my apartment complex at a woman who was just carrying her groceries and thinking, it must be nice to feel normal. I mean, I don't know anything about that lady, but that was my thought. And then I have another memory of just feeling just broken inside, just this can't be the plan. And my little three-year-old coming and sitting on my lap and just singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And this is, you know, a song that we learn when we're so little and it was so profound. I just started bawling because it's just that simple little truth that God needed to speak to me through my own child in that moment because mm -hmm. it's those simple little things sometimes that we need the reminding of. You know, how how is this? How am I going to make it through this? And God's like, I'm here. Mm. I see you. So, I had a version of the way I thought my life should go. And I think so many people are already saying, you know, I, I can so relate to this. Um, and I also had a version of who I thought I would be in response to this. I had been knowing the Lord for so long and knew so many verses. And I think I was disappointed with how I was responding to things. Like I had verses, I knew what the right answer was, but I feel like it just wasn't working. And just like my video said, you know, I'm famous for throwing a good pity party that everyone is invited to. And the thing that I say at my pity parties is it's not fair. It's not fair because there's that famous quote, right? We're all comparing our behind the scenes to everybody else's highlight reel. And it seemed like everybody else was getting what I was praying for. Mm. And that didn't seem fair. But more than anything, I wanted to understand why was this happening? What was wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Like, why did I have to struggle so bad? And because I didn't understand, I couldn't explain it to anybody else. And that was really, really frustrating. And then I felt like I was just always the sad girl. And I was kind of a lot. And this was a label that I put on myself. 
I was going to be the kind of a lot girl who was always kind of sad. And this was my identity. So I wanted to be known. I wanted to be understood. I wanted people to help me through this. How could this be God's plan if it was this painful? Yet in the middle of all this pain and disillusionment with God, really, I felt like he was calling me into something like a process with him. I don't know if you guys can recognize that in the middle of something like this, that God is actually calling you and saying, I'm not changing anything, but I'm calling to change you. And will you participate in that? Because that is the thing. We want him to change everything that's going around on around us because we just want to get out of it, right? But sometimes he'll let us stay in the middle of that thing in order for us to be changed. And if I'm honest, we're still currently active in that process mm -hmm. all the time, right? Because the sanctification never really goes away. But I realized I had a choice to make, and we all have this choice, right? Will I enter into it with him, or will I keep running away? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I did run away, but in this moment, I chose to stay. For so many people that are tuning in and reading the comments and saying that they've been in similar seasons or they are currently in that season, how have you guys chosen to stay? Like, mm. how have you said, I choose to believe that God is faithful, that he will not leave me where I am, and I choose to trust him and praise him through this. Um, Ashley, how did you stay? I mean, I think it was the little choices every single day. And sometimes we just want this big thing to happen, mm -hmm. but it's those little choices like, I'm going to have faith again today. And so often when these things happen, God demands that we do it alone. Mm -hmm. And that's like the hardest part because I think we want the community around us. But you guys remember the story of mm -hmm. Jacob, right? Like we are all familiar with the story of Jacob. And if you need a refresher for this part of the story, it's found in Genesis 32. But if you're familiar with that, you'll know that Jacob wrestles with God in this chapter. And he was known as a deceiver, right? He deceived his brother out of his birthright. Well, this is the moment that he's going back to face that very brother. And he's like, I think this brother is going to kill me. Mm -hmm. And he's scared. And he sends his family and the crowds and everything ahead of him. Like, he's going to prepare some gifts, all this. And in that moment of being alone is where the wrestle happens. And this is often the place where God meets us in the wrestle as well, because he's trying to reveal something to us that he can't reveal with a bunch of other people around us. We can't have our parents, our pastors, or our peers wrestle for us. We have to do it ourselves. And what I found during my process was that I wanted all those people to be my savior. Mm -hmm. I wanted my parents to save me. I wanted my siblings to save me or even my friends. And God said, no, you already have a savior and it's me. And so we wouldn't let them do that anymore. Mm. So one of our biggest challenges and temptations during this time, these times in our life is to rush God. And unfortunately, I do not like to say this because I hate it so much. God will not be rushed. <laughs> I hate it so much because things just, he takes his merry sweet time, right? He takes as long as it takes. And I want it to be over, you know, yesterday, if, if possible. Me too. <laughs> but we have to change our questions. And these are the questions we're asking, right? When is this going to be over? And why are you allowing this? Wrestling changes the question to what are you trying to change in me, Lord? And how can I surrender to what you're doing in my life? Is this easy? No. No. <laughs> absolutely it's not. <laughs> no. And it's not simple. No. No. It's not. But absolutely, is he worth it? Yeah. 100%. For sure. Mm -hmm. And that is why we do it. That's why we enter the wrestle. Because maybe in this moment, it's hard to remember how good he is because our circumstances aren't good. But remember in the past mm -hmm. how good he has mm -hmm. been. And he does what is good for us. Even his no is loving us best. We want to see him do great and grandiose things. But so often he wants to know, will we trust him in the minute and the mundane, mm -hmm. the everyday little things? We have to choose to engage God when no one is looking. 
when no one sees us, no one's going to applaud us, no one even cares. Are we going to show up in those spaces and places? These moments wrestling with God create intimacy that nothing else can create. That is why we engage him in these places. And this is what I want to say to you who are watching today. When no one else sees you cry all those tears, he does. Mm -hmm. When no one else sees your face in the carpet pleading with him over your circumstances, he does. And he sees when you get up again, faith filled with nothing having changed yet mm -hmm. and do it again the next day. He is there with you. Jacob held on to that man and that wrestle even when he was tired. He even had his hip put out a joint. Now we just read Ooh. past that and think like, oh, like that has got to hurt. Yeah. You yeah. know, like your hand, that's got to so hurt. Like imagine your hip. I mean, Ooh. it's just got to be so hard. And he held on anyways. And the man even says to him, let me go for it's daybreak. And Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. We have to have this resolution with our God that we know he can and we're not going to let go until he blesses us because we know he can and because we know he wants to. Mm -hmm. Nothing pleases God more than us hanging on with everything we have when it is hardest to do so. Mm -hmm. Jacob knew he couldn't move on to that next phase of his life without God's blessing. He was too afraid to do it himself. And that's the place where God wants to release us as well. But here's the other thing. The other crazy part of this is that the man asks him in the next verse, what is your name? I would like to know who I'm wrestling with. <laughs> I would like to know their name might be a good idea. I don't know. It seems kind of weird. But God always has a purpose for the things that he does. Mm. And we know that names have such meaning in God's word. And Jacob means surplanter. And we know he had been a deceiver. So when he's asking him his name, he's asking him to confess who he had been, the identity that he had been known by, that he probably even saw himself as. And he says, my name is Jacob. And he says, you will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. So he's facing his past. He's facing the fears and the choices that he's made and all those things that had defined him. And now God is telling him, actually, that's not who you are. This is who you are. And he gives him the name Israel, who we still know uh, today as a country. He didn't know in that struggle, in that wrestle, in that moment, the generational impact that that would have that we would still know today. And you don't know as you struggle and you wrestle and you hold on to faith, the people that are impacted, that are watching you walk through what you're walking through and the impact that it's going to make on the generations to come. So keep holding on. But here's the thing. We all have these identities that we're holding on to. The things that he defined him in the past, I have those things. What are the things that you guys might recognize as yeah. identities? Yeah, I think when you bring that up, I think about this label and this lie that I've believed as my identity for a large part of my story and of my life. And it's this lie that I'm no one's first choice, that I'm second best, that sure, people may like me or tolerate me, and I may get invited to things, but I'm just kind of a pity invite or a sympathy mm. choice. I'm not, I'm kind of like the JV or the second string. Um, and that's something that God has just been revealing to me as a lie that I believe throughout mm -hmm. my life. Yeah. Yeah. Something that you said at the beginning, Ashley, is that you felt like you were kind of a lot. And I relate to that so much. I constantly feel like I'm too much. I'm too loud. I'm too silly. I'm too odd or whatever. Um, but then simultaneously, I feel like I'm not enough. So mm. I might be too loud, but I'm also not funny enough. Or I might be too crazy, but I'm also not crazy enough or whatever. Yeah, it's like this yeah. double-edged sword of mm. I'm too much, but I'm also at the same time not enough. Yeah. And what I want to point out to you guys is here are these beautiful girls who are doing this show and they're being vulnerable with you because we all have something. There mm. is not one person. The enemy lies to us and say, you're the only one. 
You're the only one that feels like that. You're the only one that struggles. But you know what? When we're vulnerable and we share, I think like, yeah, I felt exactly like Macy has felt. And yeah, I've felt exactly like Maddie has felt. And I felt like too much and not enough. And I have my own things. My thing is like being rejected. And something I've learned recently is like when we believe something about ourselves, we go through life looking for proof mm -hmm. that that is true instead of looking for the opposite that, you know, people are in accepting us or they that we're not enough we're, we're just right <laughs> whatever it happens to be and so God wants to give us our new identities through these wrestling times mm, that's so, so yeah. good that is so good Ashley um for people that are tuning into this and they feel the same way and they feel like they're in a similar circumstance what are like tangible steps that they can make to like overcome this that's such a good question I think one of the first things is really pursue counseling, especially if you're having this mental health um, struggle because it really is so helpful and so needed. And I think we're going to put a link in. Yeah. The chat. So first I want to say how many people sitting right here have been or are currently in counseling? Me. And it's <laughs> funny because everyone behind the camera also raised their hand. <laughs> I love um, counseling. I think that sometimes counseling, you're kind of like, oh, who does that? It's all of us have done it and yeah. it's been so helpful. Um, we're going to link below a website that you can go to. You can find a Christian counselor near you, which is just going to be so beneficial. Yeah. We hope that you can pursue that. Um, but what else can we do, Ashley? Okay, so another thing that I've been really challenged over this whole period of this wrestling for me was to be a blessing hunter because when you are ruminating about what is wrong with you and your circumstances, you focus on what's missing, but you miss what's there. And I would even challenge you wherever you are sitting right now, look around you, look for ways that God has blessed you right now. And we, if we sit here, I think, you know, you two, this room, the other people we work with, there's always something. Mm. And I even read an article once that if you list every day things that you're thankful for, it has the same effect on your, bro your brain as an antidepressant. Wow. Mm. It really does affect how we think and feel. So look for God, the ways that he is moving, because he is. It mm. might be the way we want yet, but he is doing something. That's so good. The next thing is um, let God do what he came to do. We don't have to look any further than the cross to know that sometimes blessing is on the other side of pain. So surrender. What does surrender look like for you? So are you fighting him in some way? Be willing to let go and let him do what he needs to do. And then last is be radically committed to hanging on no matter how hard it is or how much it hurts and be faithful in the very smallest ways. How can we cooperate with him? Sometimes we're always looking for, what does God want me to do? What is his will? And all these things. And sometimes we have to think, what was the last thing he told me to do? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not that significant. Maybe it's talk nice to my husband. <laughs> or maybe it's pick up the dishes without being like, <laughs> yeah. again, you know? It's the, it's the littlest things. Those are the things that God also sees. How can we be faithful in those things? And those were the things that God challenged me during that time. Mm -hmm. He's like, I know, Ashley, you want to be on the other side of this, but I need you to be faithful exactly where you are, changing diapers or mm -hmm. whatever it is, and trusting me in the middle of that. And I also just started writing down my story because yeah. I wanted to be able to hopefully someday help someone else. Yeah. I think that's really important is I think how you shared your story and just all the ways that I know that it's helping. I can read the comments as they're coming in. What gave you the courage to share your story? I think realizing that I wanted my pain to matter, you know, and I wanted, I knew I couldn't be the only one because as I started blogging, I would share something. People would be like, me too. Mm -hmm. And I think, wow, we can really journey together because as soon as you guys share, I feel like, wow, they understand. And it's a way for us to feel less isolated mm -hmm. and also to minister for our pain to realize that it has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We get messages and comments and emails all the time from just women that are asking, hey, how do I begin to share my story? 
how do I begin to like write this mm -hmm. down so that I can help other people who are going through the same situation. And we actually created a membership site just for this. It's called Compel Writers Training, and it's a site devoted to helping women learn how to write their story, whether that means they want to publish a book someday, mm -hmm. which to me sounds really daunting. Um, but it also is a way for you to figure out how to blog or even just share your story in a way that's cohesive and that people can relate to. And the point of that mm -hmm. is we want people to be able to share their story because we know that the message that God has given you is desperately needed yeah. mm -hmm. by yeah. so many people around yeah. the world. Yes. Um, so check out Compel Training. Um, we'll put a link in the comments below and you can check it out. Registration is open right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, but if you don't want to commit to joining Compel Train, we also have a free group on our Compel Training Facebook page that's for nonfiction authors. So if you want to chat with people that are maybe just starting this journey too, you can go check it out over there. And we will also link that in the yes. comments. Yes. So go check it out. Um, Ashley, we're just so grateful that you came today, that you were sharing so vulnerably with us. Um, and we hope that we can do this again with you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, I, we're going to put a slide up on the screen for just some reminders of things that are happening at Proverbs 31. I'm also going to put my hat on since we're done <laughs> with the show. You guys can go get your hat. Yeah, don't forget twins. about the hat. Yeah, don't forget about the hat. And then you can post a picture of your hat on social media and Maddie can see it and she'll be so oh, yeah, happy. Oh yeah, use um, tag <laughs> Proverbs 31 and in we your will pictures of the hat. see it. And but I love that. friends, this has been such a fun April show. I hope that what Ashley shared encouraged you. I feel really encouraged and really seen and I feel like I'm leaving feeling less alone. And so we hope you're feeling that way too. Um, but we cannot wait to see you on the third Thursday of May for the May episode of the Proverbs 31 ministries morning show thank you again for joining us we're so grateful for you and have a great rest of your day bye everyone bye, bye.